Okay, so thank you. I hope you enjoyed your break there. I had a chance to catch up um, with the, your fellow members. But so for our next presentation, we've got uh, Bijal Sangani is going to come and speak on behalf of EuroIX. And it's a bit of an interactive session, which she will tell you all about. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, nice, nice to be back here at the, uh, at the links meeting. So um, today's presentation, normally when I come to the uh, links meeting, I talk about um, URIX and what we do, uh, the different activities. But today, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what we do, but then focus on two of our main projects that we're working on at the moment. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry. So, first of all, uh, for those of you who don't know who EuroIX is, we are a membership association for internet exchanges. So we currently have 60 um, IXP members. Um, while you, the name suggests that they're all from Europe, we actually have members from all over the world. Um, we come together to talk about all things related to IXPs. We also have um, patrons, and patrons are typically organizations that work really closely with IXPs. So you can see vendors, data centers, optics providers, um, and other entities, any, any entities that are working closely with IXs. We also have ISOC. Um, and this just brings the community and people that are working on IXs closer together. So I know that we have a number of uh, patrons out there, so big shout out to our patrons. Thank you for uh, supporting us. Okay, so um, we are a membership association for IXPs, so what do we do? We hold um, a couple of events a year. We have two forums, which are uh, actually member meetings. Um, and, and of course, our patrons are also invited to those. Uh, we also run a number of workshops and hackathons throughout the year with the, with, the, with the aim of bringing IXPs together to work on issues or problems or, or talk about things that, are, things that are happening at their IX. So for example, in a couple of weeks, we have um, a root server workshop where uh, you know, we'll be talking about everything root servers. I'm sure that lots of you will find that really interesting. Um, so we have currently 15 IXs who are registered to come and um, work on that workshop. And the great thing about some of the workshops we do is that we have um, you know, people external who can also come and um, present in those. So for example, you know, we invite the developers, so BIRD developers and also the open BGPD developers, so that the IXs have hands-on and first and can speak to the developers um, in person if there are any issues there. Other things we do are reports um, and newsletters. So if you're interested to hear, hear about our activities and keep up to date with what we do, feel free to subscribe to those. You can find a number of our reports on the EuroX website. Um, and, of course, and of course, these are all focused around um, IXPs. For our members, we also have um, a mailing list. And um, during, during the COVID times, we did a number of virtual events um, in an effort to keep the community connected. And these are also workshop related. Some of them were training, some of them informative. Some of them are panel discussions about, you know, one, one for example, was on the future of the interconnection uh, scene. So lots of different things that you can uh, learn from, uh, from the website there. We also work on a number of projects, um, and these are all for the community. So again, while um, you know, my title was Don't Forget the Peers, and that's because while you know, URIX is an association for internet exchange points, a lot of the work that we do do can actually help and be beneficial to the networks that are the members or the customers of the internet exchange as well. So for example, we have the IXP database, which is something that I'm going to talk a little bit more in detail about shortly. The Peering Toolbox, which is also the second project I'm going to be talking about uh, today. Um, we also do uh, projects that help um, support internet exchange points. So we have a fellowship uh, where in other internet exchange points can attend the forums. And we have a mentor IX program where um, uh, an IX who, is in, who wants some support or needs some help in any, any particular um, 
part of their organization, and we can do a kind of uh, matching up with a different IX so that they can learn from each other. Uh, last year, we also uh, released a new film, and I see that the chair of the committee is right there, Elaine. Um, so we released a, a new IXP film, um, and the IXP film was um, produced to help um, people understand really what an IXP is. So um, I'm not doing the interactive session yet, but um, if you could be ready um, just because of time constraints, it is going to be on Slido, and I, this slide does come up um, again, but that's the, uh, that's the uh, channel that you need to put into the Slido, uh, 1828874. But like I said, it will come back, so you don't need to panic and run there right now. Okay, so that's a brief summary about what your IX is and what we do. Um, and now, like I said, I'm going to focus on two of the projects. The first one is the IXP database. So earlier, um, John asked about who knows um, peering DB. Um, so I'm now going to ask the question, who's heard of the IXP database? Okay, so not, not as many, but um, it's good to know that there are still some people in the room that know what the IXP database is. So, um, for those of you that don't know, uh, the IXP database is, uh, is a, a database which is actually uh, fully automated and um, reports data from IXPs. Um, so a question that we get asked a lot of the time is, you know, there's peering DB, why do you need another database? So just to make it really clear, peering DB, the networks enter the data, the IXP database, the IXPs enter the data. So the difference is who owns the data. The IXPs own the IXP database data and the networks own the peering DB data. So, what can you find in the database? You can find information about the IXP participants, the IXP locations, also about hardware and uh, software versions of, uh, of uh, uh, the vendors that are being used, and also root server information. So you can find, we have a standard uh, schema, which you can find on GitHub if you're interested to see more information about that. Um, and also um, a little hint for um, networks that use peering DB, you can actually allow your IXP to automatically update your entries by ticking a box in peering DB. So if you're interested to read about that and you want your IXP to do the updates for you, then um, you can go to that IXF JSON import rules on the peering DB website and click that and then you don't need to um, always tick every time you uh, add, your, add a network that you're peering with. So, um, homepage, so uh, the IXP database is a work in progress, um, but I'm gonna go through some of the um, information that you can find straight away um, live um, on, on the network. So, um, IXP is connected by ASNs. You can see which uh, IXPs here have the most ASNs. And uh, this is, of course, according to the IXP database. And one thing that I say here to look out for is the API. So if the IXP, if this is ticked, then that data is automated directly from the IXP. So that's a, that's a hint for everyone who's, uh, who's using the database. We also, um, you can also see the newest IXPs that are added to the database. This doesn't necessarily mean that they're a new IXP. It may just mean in some cases that this is the first time that we've heard about them or they've heard about us and informed us about the IXP. But you can, we can also see uh, which IXPs have been added to the database. Uh, you can also see the latest network connections to IXPs. So you, if you want to keep an eye on uh, new networks that are peering at different IXs, you can see who's been added um, and when that's been done there. Um, you can also compare IXs. So for those that are looking to join different IXs and you want to see which ASNs are present 
at a particular IX, you can actually go into the database, you click which IXs you want to compare, and then you press compare, and then you can see information like this. I've just taken, just taken links, um, LON1, and um, actually I should have taken LON2, but anyway, um, yes, somebody else can try that out. Uh, you can put in whichever IXs you want, and you can see the information um, about the IX there. Here we can see the links is a summary of uh, what you can find uh, the details about links. Um, and then here you can see the unique ASNs, which I think is the interesting part. So you can see which ASNs are unique to that IX. And so then you can see, like, if you're trying to reach certain ASNs, where you will, uh, where you're likely to find them. Um, but we also show common ASNs as well. So you can see which ASNs you're uh, pairing with at that exchange that are common and which ones are unique. So, uh, like I said, the IXP database is a work in uh, progress project. Um, you know, now we can collect, organize, we have uh, collect, organize, and uh, the data is in a, you can see the data in a structured format. You can also download um, any uh, data that you want in a CSV file. So, for example, the compare information, if you want to have see information about particular IXPs and what ASNs are connected, so you can get all this information downloaded as well. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, what's coming soon is uh, maps and charts so you can actually visualize this data and also downloadable data sets. Actually, that's already available, so I should move that over. Uh, next steps is finalizing the traffic API. So we also collect traffic data. Um, this is currently done through the IXP manager uh, template. But um, we, we also have a, uh, a prototype that we're working on that will soon go through the process and uh, will be available. And then we'll be able to collect and present live days traffic as well. And finally, for the IXP database, um, identifying third party useful data as well. So that then we can give a more holistic view of uh, the internet connection, interconnection scene. Other information is available um, on this slide and also on the website, so please feel free. There's also an API um, and you can see the slide deck for uh, further information later. Of course, I would like to, I'd well, love to thank all our sponsors because without the sponsors, we couldn't make it happen. So a big uh, shout out to our sponsors as well. Quick reminder of the interactive session code uh, 188874 for Slido. Next, I'm going to talk about peer, uh, another project that we're working on, which is the uh, Peering Toolbox. Uh, the Peering Toolbox, so uh, I've, I've gone really fast, but um, I wanted to just say that um, uh, the Peering Toolbox actually answers some of the questions that uh, John presented um, just before me. So I was thinking that this is uh, uh, the, uh, the run of the uh, agendas worked out really well. So, um, so what is the Peering Toolbox? So a couple of years ago, a number of networks and a number of IXPs were sitting together at a conference like this and we're talking about the number of new um, enterprise networks that are joining IXPs and some of the challenges that are faced um, when new enterprise networks are joining IXPs and some of those um, like the one what uh, John was um, also explaining because you know the role of enterprise networks and transit providers has changed over time um, so I'm not going to repeat uh, John's presentation because I'm sure you, everyone was listening. Um, so there is a, there is a problem. Um, we've identified there's a problem. A number of people have said that you know we need to do something. So um, what have we done? We've created the Peering Toolbox. So the Peering Toolbox is a community-focused project. Um, we have uh, organizations involved, including uh, Lynx, Snap Africa, Microsoft, Amazon, Inex, um, and it is open. So if you have anything to share and you want to be part of the group, then please feel free to contact me. The aim of the uh, toolbox is to provide a learning structure and best practices, best practice information for new entrants into the interconnection community. 
The toolbox will act as a, as a reference and a guide that, can, that IXPs and networks can refer to um, and for best practice information and also learn how to uh, meet the IXPs and peers requirements. The other thing, the other key thing about the, the peering toolbox is that, you know, we're not going to go out and reinvent the wheel because there is a lot of really, really good information out there. The only problem is, is that it's all over the place. And if you're a new entrant coming into the, into the um, community, you know, where do you go? Who do you trust? Where do you look? Where do you find all this information? So what we've done <coughs> is we've put all this together in one place. So the website is focused on learning, um, short, uh, short sections uh, with clear explanations of each of the topics. Um, and it's advice from experienced peers uh, sharing tips and tricks. Um, and it also includes the use of um, IXP database and peering DB. So uh, we've actually contracted out the uh, work to a product manager, who is Philip Smith, who some of you may be um, aware of. He has 25 plus years experience in BGP, IXPs, and peering. And his main job is also um, training, and he provides training all over the world. So um, it's live. It went live a couple of weeks ago, so please uh, feel free to take a look. And um, of course, I would love to hear your feedback. Um, the beginner section is done, I should tell you. Um, we are now working on the intermediate section and the advanced section. Um, so uh, watch out. This is, uh, this is becoming soon. Um, as a quick snapshot, this is what it looks like. Um, here you have the, uh, the beginners, the intermediate, the advanced. Uh, you click on the learn more and you can go into it more. Uh, there's also a chat, so if you have a question that you think of while you're on the toolbox and you think, oh, I'd like to ask that question, you can do that. Um, and, you know, we've tried to answer the most basic questions like, you know, what is a network? What is a network operator? What is transit? Because what we found is transit doesn't necessarily mean transit all over the world. How we interpret the word transit isn't necessarily how what um, in Asia, transit might mean something different. So just a kind of, you know, best practices and informative guide. Um, you know, what is the uh, importance of peering? Where to peer? What do you need for peering? You know, things like that. And I'm back to my interactive session. So that is the uh, peering toolbox. So that's the second project that I wanted to talk about. So um, now on to the interactive session. I hope you're all... Uh, ready with your um, your Slido uh, ID, which is which I'm going to come up in, which is going to come up in the next slide as well. Um, but so the the idea of this interactive session is, and also you know talking uh, the 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 title of my presentation is you know don't forget the peers is because you know while Eurix is an association for IXPs, obviously you know the IXPs wouldn't be around if it wasn't for the peers. So. Um, you know, the peers are important, even to your IX, um, and, you know, because that's, uh, that helps our members. Um, and so today's presentation was really to highlight some of the activities we do that can be helpful, not just to IXPs, but also to the, the larger community. So, you know, whether you're a network or you're, you're starting off in the industry, in, in any kind, any, you know, whatever role you're in, it can be um, useful. But now, you know, I've talked quite a lot and, and quite fast as well. Um, but now I'd like to hear from, from, from you um, and hear about what tools and data, you know, you, you need or you use to help make your peering decisions. You know, what's useful and as an association for IXs, what more can we do, uh, you know, to help the IXs, to help our membership and then in turn to help you. So, uh, here we go. Can you all log on to the Slido and get ready? I'm hoping some magic is happening back there.
We did test this, and it does work, by the way. <laughs> uh -huh. uh. Oh, okay, so we already have some questions. Uh, can you go to poll? I think it's a tab across, uh, ne the next tab. All oh, right, uh, we seem to have gone. Okay, first question. Uh, so I've broken this uh, poll down in the survey down into uh, two sections really. One is the IXP and interaction, and the second is how many. Uh, the second is data and tools. So uh, first question: How many IXPs are you peering at? Um, Thought I'd start off with something quite easy. Uh, hopefully, you all know. All right, so that's interesting. Over 60% uh, 60 of you are at five or more. All right, um, what's the most useful thing about IXPs? Saving costs, having control of your traffic path, reducing latency to key destinations, networking like meetings like this, learning and training opportunities. So we have 30, uh, reducing latency to key destinations is a clear winner there. Next question. Um, I presented the peering toolbox just earlier. Um, do, you, do you find this a useful tool and will you use it in the future? Maybe. <laughs> That's helpful. Okay. <laughs> I'll take the uh, yes, it looks great. Um, what challenges have you experienced with IXPs? Root servers. <laughs> oh, come on, keep it sensible. Some interesting answers there. Okay. Mm. 
Right, now into the uh, data and tools section. So, I spoke about the IXP database in my presentation. Now that you know about the tool, are you likely to use it? Okay. Um, what data inform or information do you find useful when deciding to join an IXP? So we have overall traffic at the IXP, types of networks to peer with at the IXP, information about vendors, um, individual port traffic at an IXP. So when, when we say uh, type of networks, I mean, um, um, for example, whether they're CDNs or uh, uh, enterprise networks or, or more specific type of network. So that's interesting. All right. <coughs> what data do you find useful when making peering decisions? Okay. Um, what data is missing that could make peering a pleasure and not a pain? <laughs> Have we got some URIX people in here? <laughs> We're talking about data. What data is missing? I'll wait for these two people to stop. So accurate contact details, I'm gonna read the sensible answers. Um, <laughs> accurate contact details, responsiveness of peer, better policy information, uh, price, startup guides. Fair share support. Okay. And last question. If there was one thing IXPs could do better, what would that be? Again, please keep it sensible. You can't say that for all of the answers.
All right. Um, there's a few people typing, so I'll let that finish. All right. Uh, thank you. I don't think I'm going to read any of those. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, that's the end of my presentation. Uh, thank you all for, uh, first of all, listening, and secondly, taking part in the interactive session. Uh, there were some really interesting answers there, uh, which we will uh, take back and see what we can do with. Um, are there any questions? I don't know if I've got time for questions or comments or anything. Just take one. Any questions? No? All right, thank you. All right. Thank you, Peter. Thank you.